how are you doing so welcome to the olinderas monthly weekly webinar on technologies my name is chun ming i am from olin data i'm the pr principal consultant of olin data right where i do consulting related to any technologies related to puppet system administration or infrastructure in general and um, very little bit about myself i've been using puppet about for four to five years now and um, been using it in whether small or large scale environment so for today the webinar is we will be talking about how to manage your docker containers and aws clouds with puppet so it will be pretty much a really short presentation to couple together with some demos and then i prepared you know um, some time for you guys to ask some questions at the end of the webinar later so that um, if you have any questions feel free to ask them as well okay and um, so let's begin So Docker and AWS is something very recent right now. It's on the, uh, that is the current trend. Everyone wants it, right? With AWS, everybody wants to be on the cloud. Why do we want to be on the cloud? Because we want to scale. We want to be able to, to build our infrastructure very quickly. We do not want to be tied down to the conventional method of ritualization or the bare metal setup anymore because those takes really a lot of time and we do not really want to manage downtimes in the event where we say storage failures, network failures or hardware failures in that, of any other kind. So that's why everyone wants to be on the cloud. And that, and the choice that everyone choose to be on is AWS EC2 because at this point, first of all, it's scalable, it's flexible, it's cheap, and etc. There's many reasons why we want to be on it. Okay, and our, like I mentioned earlier, we want the cloud because we want the flexibility in managing the infrastructure. Okay, and the flexibility includes to be able to scale anytime to add storage anytime to modify our network setups to to make it secure in the way we want every organization has a different way of setting up their infrastructure and we do not want to spend too much time building on that so that is why we go to a provider such as aws and the next thing is when we have our infrastructure we will have our applications, of course, that we want to serve out to our customers, to our clients, internally even. But then again, yep, we face a problem where application always interferes with our host or we in interferes with another application in terms of dependency or um, software setup, infrastructural setup and whatnot. So, the idea come, came up for Docker as a container whereby we want the applications to be isolated from the host. When we isolate this application in a container separately from the host, we are essentially isolating it from the other applications as well, whereby we put all of them in a form of containers. So, and this is what we call a microservices. That's where we are heading towards to at uh, this present trend. And on top of having the applications to be containerized, we want our deployment to be hassle-free. With a cloud and a container, our deployment should be, will be a lot faster than what we normally have. What we do is we go onto the AWS dashboard, click launch instance, and the next thing we know is we say, deploy this uh, Docker container on top of it, and within the next maybe five to 10 minutes, we have our application running. On top of that, our application, which is designed to scale, has no problem of scaling because with Amazon's 
auto scaling capabilities, we are able to scale it as we need it, or are we putting it behind the elastic pins uh, load balancer so that we can you know, serve it behind a load balance uh, request and so forth. That way, now our applicate, our current setup is robust, flexible, scalable, isolated, and so on. You can name it. There are so many benefits that we could get out of, you know, using a container technology or a cloud technology. But for today, we are more focusing on the popular ones, which is Docker and AWS. So the, the solution that we usually have to, to get all this is, we, for instance, the first one I would like to highlight is Mesosphere. Mesosphere allows us to manage a cluster of our cloud instances or bare metal instances, virtual machines, together with Docker. Right? So it's basically a data center as an operating system. Okay, whereby we can deploy Docker instances or, or Docker containers on a set of resources be underneath that. And the set of resources could be an EC2 cloud or a, a Rackspace server or some form of virtualization that you have. So Mes Mesosphere is actually a very cool technology. So you should probably check it out if you are using Docker and you plan to deploy it in a, in a large scale. And although it's not free, but it's still worth a look at it. The next thing, of course, we have the Amazon ECS, whereby Amazon has recently released the, feature, the integration between the EC2 instances and the Docker containers. So basically, we can now deploy Docker containers directly on EC2 instances. In the traditionally, we will need to set up an EC2 instance before we can actually deploy our Docker containers on top of them. But with ECS, we do not need to. It's more like we just deploy our containers and Amazon will take care of the instances itself. It will spin up an instance whereby you can deploy your container on top of it and voila, it just works. You do not need to worry about scaling and whatnot. So of course, there are also other solutions whereby you want to apply it on top of your public or private cloud infrastructure. For example, the more popular one would be OpenStack, then where we can deploy Docker on top of our OpenStack instances. And the same thing goes with Open Nebula Docker instances. So. These solutions here are designed to help us in a way we say, okay, this is our setup. We want to deploy the cloud. We want to deploy Docker because we want to have all the flexibility and scalability that we were talking about earlier, right? So these are just a very short list of solutions that we have at present. Of course, there are more to this that we can, than the eye can meet. So now that you see that we have all these solutions that help us to deploy Docker uh, or cloud and whatnot, so where does Puppet come in place? So Puppet as a configuration management or an automation software, we, it allows us to do a lot, a lot of things. So do not just write Puppet off yet because it could still be really, really useful and beneficial. Okay, first of all, you need consistency in setting up your infrastructure. Let's take AWS for the start. AWS, you when you want to set up everything, you would, uh, your instance, you select your AI in my image, you, you click launch, and then you assign it to the <clears throat> proper VPC security group, assign an elastic IP address, uh, and, and then you uh, set a tag, set availability zone, the EBS optimized or not, then the termination, the block device names, and so on. So that is just for one, okay? But what if you have multiple 
or you have a set of instance that you want to deploy, obviously there are things like cloud formation to help you to do that, but yet you have to create a cloud formation template. And boy, I can see that the cloud formation template is not exactly walk in the park either. It's a very, very long text file. So Puppet can help you with consistency because as Puppet's code it, it is, which, which I will show you later, it's very plain, simple English where I can say, if I deploy my instance this way, it will always deploy my instance this way. So I do not worry about deploying instances differently from one another because with Puppet, I can guarantee my consistency between all my instances. Secondly, Docker setup. The Docker setup is different across different Linux distribution and whatnot of setup. Okay, so how do you guarantee that we can actually install these Dockers on all the Linux distribution in the same way? Again, we will use Puppet to ensure it installs and set up Docker in the same manner across all of our Puppet infrastructure or across all of our hosts for Docker hosts, whether regardless Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS or Red Hat, whatever Linux distribution that supports it. So this is one thing that we can guarantee is the consistency. And the second thing is infrastructure as a code. But then again, why I call, so when we have all our public code in one place, and we can say, okay, this is how I set up my Docker instances. This is how I set up my um, cloud instances, my EC2 setup or my AWS setup in general, it, I'm able to see, visualize how my infrastructure looks like from the code itself. Presently, if I want to take a look of how my current setup looks like, I will have to go to the EC2 AWS dashboard, the console, take a look at it. All right, this is how I set up my um, AWS infrastructure. This is how I set up all my Docker hosts or my Docker containers by using the um, Mesosphere or whatever thing, uh, cluster management software there is. So it's very hard to visualize our infrastructure when you have so many information coming from different places. I'm a very simple person. I like to view everything in a single location. So therefore, Puppet as Puppet as an infrastructure as a code does help me because I can view everything in a single location in my Puppet code itself, which is on the Puppet Master. Of course, centralized configuration is why I still choose to use Puppet for Docker and AWS for any technology as a matter of fact, because I have all the configuration in a single place. I do not need to go to AWS dashboard just to spin spin up the instances and then log in to each of every of these servers to spin up the uh, to launch the Docker containers, or I don't have to go to another dashboard to do this or this and that. So there are too many dashboards, too many too many command lines that makes me go thinking which is which. I want just I just want to be able to deploy a simple application. That is what I want. I don't want anything more than that. So that confuses me when I have too many dashboard or command line configuration all over the place. And the thing here is now we have Docker on AWS. Right. It's great. We got it working on AWS and Docker. But the next thing is, what if we, we find that, okay, now AWS is no longer feasible. We want to move away from AWS to, let's say, OpenStack or Rackspace or your own bare metal setup, VMware, and so forth. So what happened to our current setup? Do we have to rebuild from scratch again? The, the containers might be there, but our host, our infrastructure is gone. 
right? So with Puppet, we can actually take this code to be portable. Okay, we can, if we do not need AWS anymore, okay, we just trash AWS away or put it aside. And then we, we write another set of code that says, all right, I want the uh, uh, OpenStack Nova instance or whatnot. Now, my code allows me to be portable. I can deploy Docker on any server that I want, or I can deploy AWS from any server that I want. I can just take the code, deploy it on a new Puppet Master, or deploy it on an exit existing puppet master and and there we go i have the same setup again the idea here is code portability that we can reuse over and over again and of course configuration gets more complex as applications evolve All right it's very simple to do a docker run with you know echo hello world while true sleep one done but then again it gets more complicated when you start linking between containers, um, mounting volumes, and then exposing ports, creating ports, and so on. You, you Then after EC2 instances, you get more complicated when you want to set up VPN, RDS, and so on. So we have a lot of you know moving parts all over the place. So how do we actually go about that? So when, when this comes around, you will say that Puppet comes really helpful because it does help us to solve a lot of this issue whereby we do not want to spend too much time on configuration. Yeah. I will show you some examples during the demo later on how we actually solve this complexity of configuration. And obviously there are various a lot of other reasons why do we still need Puppet. I would never ever take configuration management or automation out of the picture because it's just as essential as any other software that there is out there. Okay, so do I still need to convince you to why we still need Puppet on Docker and AWS? Maybe, maybe you might not be convinced on why we really need Puppet for AWS and Docker, but let's see in the next couple of slides on how Puppet actually manage uh, AWS and Docker itself. Okay, first up, we will see how Puppet actually set up Docker. Okay, by running doc, the Puppet module installed Garrett R Docker, we are essentially pulling the Puppet module the Docker module from the Puppet Forge and installing it on the Puppet Master. And then installing Docker on an agent is Puppet Agent is as simple as include Docker, where we actually set up the Docker installation. And then Docker image Ubuntu and image tag precise is this equivalent to Docker pull Ubuntu with a tag of precise. And of course, the next part we can see Docker run, hello world, image, Ubuntu with the tag precise, and the command that we are running. So essentially here we can see here, oh, this is exactly what I want to see as an infrastructure, as a code. I want to be able to visualize this is how my Docker is being set up. Yes, I can just type all the Docker commands, the pull, the run, the Docker exec, Docker swarm, Docker compose. You can set up all this for me, but the problem is there is no one set of document that can tell me how exactly this is being done in paper. Then this way, now with the Puppet code, I can actually visualize how I can set up Docker by pulling the specific image with the tags that I need or running Docker with the images or the command that I want. It's very simple as it is. Next, next up, how do we actually manage the AWS? So Puppet Labs has provided as a very, very extensive AWS module, although it's still under its works, but it's good enough for production use at this point. 
Okay, for example, we can see here, I'm creating an EC2 instance called webinar demo, whereby is I'm assigning to the, the East US region with a specific AMI ID and with a very specific instance type called T1 micro. Simple enough. This tells me what I need for my uh, infrastructure as a code. And then if I look down, I can see my security group called demo, which is has the ingress from CIDR from everyone, port 22, proto protocol TCP to port 22, and it's applicable to region of US East 1. Simple enough, and this way it gives me a better overview of my AWS infrastructure as compared to going into the dashboard and clicking all over the place, figuring out what is my infrastructure setup look like. Okay, to, to set this up, how does the Puppet communicate with the AWS? Is through the AWS API, which whereby you store it in the .aws slash credentials file, where we will provide an access key and a secret key. With this, then I can now create EC2 instances, I can create VPC, VPC subnets, VPC gateway, route tables, I can create RDS instances, I can create route 53 records, I can create security groups, I can create EC2 instances, subnets, and a, a whole lot more. There is a lot of other resource types that we can use to deploy our instance itself. Okay, so now that's a very short presentation, I have to admit. But then again, I guess what you'd like to see more is more of the demo on how do we actually do things like that. Okay, so for this to take place, I, I have prepared a few sample codes to make it work. Okay, I hope you can see this. All right, so this is the Puppet Master. So I've already set up my AWS credentials. So obviously I'm not going to cat that file. And then the next thing is I'm going to export the AWS region to US East one. Typically the Puppet will scan through all your AWS regions. So it'll take some time. For, so for this demo, I'm going to just to use the US East one region to, to speed it up, all right? So um, to start it off, we can do very simple commands with AWS, similarly to EC2 security group. This command should provide me with a list of all the available EC2 security group that is on my dashboard, which is true. Um, you can see now that I have all the EC2 security groups and so on. And let's see if I have any instances running. Okay, I do not have any instance running at all, which is okay. And what about EC2 VPC? I do not have any VPC as well. So, to cap it off so I have two classes here right the first thing here you can see is very a very simple setup here I'm creating a webinar demo VPC which will ensure present the region US is one with this specific image ID T1 micro and the subnet goes into a sample subnet. The next portion here is I'm creating a VPC sample with this specific block. And the next one is my security group, which is signed to the VPC sample and then you can see that this is the port, the, the ingress protocol port, the, the block, 
and then here we go we scroll down further we can see VPC subnets which is available to US East A1 which also has a route table or sample routes and then then the following part of the codes you can see that we have the ec to VPC internet get gateway and the v VPC route table see all this provides me a really over a good overview of how my infrastructure look like all in a single place I do not have, need to go clicking here click here click here and just to get an idea oh this is how it's set up but now we can just do it simple all from a single file and we can deploy it right now let's see let me deploy this So after compiling the catalog, what it's going to do now is connecting to AWS through the API and using your access key and secret key is creating all the necessary um, items that I want. So you can see created my sample VPC, my security group, my gate, my gateway, my route, and then my subnet. And of course, it, it created my um, EC2 instance, but let's check the status of the EC2 instance. And now you can see it's running, whereby we, this is all the default values that there is. And I have a private DNS name, private IP address, and whatnot, my virtualization is para-virtualized. Para security group is default because I did not assign it earlier and you can see a sample subnet is being assigned to this subnet so do I really need to go to dashboard to do all the clicking and whatnot so all I need to do is probably just keep a list of AMIs and then I can start deploying whatever I want or I can with this not this is not the end of it right we can still deploy EC2 instances with uh, Elastic IP and whatnot, assuming that you assign Elastic IP to your account, which I did not. So let's go to the um, dashboard to verify the status. Okay. And you can see I have a run running in one running instance which has all this configuration that was predefined earlier exactly how i wanted it to be right so of course i can dis destroy the uh, instances or create instances from puppet code itself and um, on top of that let's see what else we have here Security group, sample security group is in here. And let's check the inbounds. We have some inbound rules here. The SSH inbound rules. No outbounds here, all right. And then again, VPC. And then I have one VPC. Okay, with a specific CIDR. My subnet is created, route tables, internet gateways, and so on. So what does this mean to us? This means I can do a, lot, a whole lot of other things with my the puppet code itself. Okay, let's take, for example, the most complicated way is with Amazon VPC is to set up a VPN. But what if I can tell you, you can set up VPN on EC2 VPC using Puppet as well. And that way, the next time you want to create multiple VPN connectivity, you can reuse the same code over and over again without going through the hassle of clicking, 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 and clicking. That way is much more fast and is pretty much consistent and is a guaranteed way to work, right? 
So let's go to VPC, run this, and you can see here now it has all the setup. It is fairly simple. I do not really need to do anything else rather than uh, checking out what I need. So how do, do I know what I need? Okay, so if you go to this page, forge.puppetlabs.com, and you look for the Puppet Labs AWS module, it can tell you a whole lot of how to manage AWS using Docker, uh, using Puppet. And then there are sample codes that you can use and so forth. You can see here, you can see enable monitoring with CloudWatch. If you want, you can set up elastic load balancers or you can just create a stack. And here we go. These are all the available types that we can create. So basically we can have a scaling group for those who use auto scaling a lot, which is, I believe, a lot of us. And scaling policies can create VPC, VPN, uh, RDS instances, RAW 53 records, and, and that's about it for now. So as we go along, Puppet Labs keep adding more and more functionality to this AWS module as part of their cloud deployment using Puppet. So now that you have seen the setup for AWS, I would like to take your attention off from AWS for a moment, and I would like to show you how we do with Docker. So with Docker is um, a lot more simple. So we can just sh show you the code first. And this is how we do it, right? So first of all here, this class here, I'm saying I'm installing Docker with the Docker daemon listening on the DNS 8888 and the Docker users are the user CM. And of course, here we have the image Ubuntu, Docker Run, and Hello World, Ubuntu Precise, and whatnot. It's fairly simple. So let's try to run this on our agent. So to run it on our agent, okay, I have an agent called Include Webinar Docker. So this will be our agent. So you can see here, I do not have Docker. So let me run this. And as you can see, it's installing all the dependency for in setting up Docker. and the configuration of Docker itself. So up to this point, Docker setup is complete. So the next thing that we're going to do is obviously pull the Docker image and run our Docker run. So as you can see, everything is done. So let's just verify this. And now we can have, you can see here, the container is running, you put to precise, whatever the com is running is very specific command and so on. And you can see is running this itself. So as simple as it is, now we can have a Docker configuration. But this is very simple. What, what if I do something more, a little bit more complex with Docker?
Okay, let me do this. Okay, give you a better view. As you can see now, I'm creating another Docker run using the same image, right? But then again, it has a more complex setup whereby I'll say now, I want it to have port 444, 4555, and I want it to expose port 4666 and 4777. It uses a name, it mounts the volume var log, and it has a DNS. Is it privilege, pull on start, or before stop? So this is what is going to happen. So save this file. And as you can see, it's uh, done. It's now trying to um, restart the service or whatnot. So essentially, now you can see that when we have complex Docker configurations, we want it to be really consistent right because complex docker configurations are not exactly that easy because when we want to replicate over and over again we tend to miss some steps here and there with puppet we can just make sure it's consistent and it's less error prone okay and as you can see here we are done so let's now do talk of ps again and now you can see i have two Okay, and let's say that's that is all the rep. Okay, is there we go. Here we go. Three seven two six eight. Three seven two six eight is by Talker proxy. So we are exposing the both the port of uh, four seven 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 and four six six four five five five. Yes. So we we are exposing those ports, right? So now we get them as well. So it's very simple. We do not really need to go clicking all over the place or writing command lines all over the place just to deploy our containers or our cloud instances. With Puppet, we can do it all from a single place, which is our Puppet code, deploy it on the Puppet Master, and then assign the proper classes to all to the nodes that we want, and then we can have the same setup whether it's on bare metal or on a virtual machine or any cloud instance that we have here, which, as demonstrated, is very very simple. Okay, so for Docker, beyond this, what else could we do? We can do a lot of whole lot of other thing with Docker itself. Okay. Um, these are just a simple, more complicated Docker run examples, okay? And of course, we can do connect to private Docker registries for those who have them. And of course, we can also do a Docker exec. And uh, the, the next thing here is that you need to know it's still also under works to improve further. The only thing that we cannot do is we cannot do a Docker commit where we can commit a state of our container. We have to always pull the the latest or we have to commit that ourselves. It's, I'm pretty sure it's in the part of the feature request, but it's not being implemented as of now. So that's all for my demo. So what else, what is there? From here on, we can integrate this setup with our continuous integration or continuous delivery framework where we can do for testing, deployment, and so on. So that way, now it's all centralized and easy. 
we can manage so many different kind of uh, AWS resources, as you've seen. We can build a very, very complicated Docker setup, but yet it's consistent, it's um, er uh, less error prone, and uh, it's from central location and so on. We can build our own version of Puppet Compose as well using our Puppet codes, as we can see. And a whole lot other more that we could do. Well, I could not fit everything in a single one hour demo, so I'm just showing you a very simple demo during this web webinar. So now I would like to open the floor to questions. If you have questions, please do type it into the chat box onto your right hand side of your go to webinar panel. Okay, so, all right, earlier I had a question or some screen is updating. Um, so any other question, anyone? Yes, so to answer Jean, the Puppet Master deploys AWS remotely, yes. So you will run, so you will technically assign the AWS class to your Puppet Master, and the Puppet Master will connect to the AWS API to deploy the instances. Well, um, yes, so calling to do Sisig. So he said, I mentioned microservices and Docker and Amazon. Does Amazon ECS offer service discovery mechanism? Yes, they do. I believe they do. So is there any other question? We have still some quite a bit of time left for Q&A. So, and uh, how can we manage conflicts between existing AWS resources? That's a very good question. Right, so um, there, when, when there are existing AWS instances, we lock down certain attributes whereby we cannot exactly, how do you say, update a resource. For example, we cannot update IP addresses or um, VPCs is when it's already there because it's a read-only mode, and if it it would check. So we, the way Puppet works is we check based on the type and the title. So if we see a conflicting value, we we would just say that it, there is already an existing resource with this title on AWS, so we cannot create it, we cannot manage it. So perhaps you need to, to um, pay attention to it and take care of it. So Puppet will not break your existing AWS resources. So what's the managers packing inside Microsoft? We have written in Java is, well, here's the thing. Not every, so according to Dusan, they, they have micro, they have 50 microservices written in Java. And um, what is the benefit of them running in Docker? I would say that Java is a little bit too heavy to run on Docker. And not everything should run on Docker. So at this point, I will say that we should run your microservices outside of Docker instead. So not everything should go into Docker. Everyone, you know, I do know that Docker is a trend now and everybody wants to move the, their services into Docker as part of container, containerization. But 
the reality is not everyone needs Docker. You only need Docker if you need it. But having 50 microservices on Java, I don't think so. Docker will be the way for it unless your Java is not really that heavy. But still, you could still run it in Docker. It's down to testing, obviously. The, the latest Puppet Masters run out of uh, based out of Java Jetty Web Server and Clojure, and we could still run them on Docker or Vagrant instances, so it doesn't really matter. But still, down to testing and the way you write your code, obviously. So Aditya asks, uh, where does Docker exactly fit in? Um, maybe you would like to uh, describe your question a little bit more? So Dusan says, uh, Docker is good in dev environment when we need some containers that someone's already packed. Yes. That that is very true. So since someone has already packed the Docker container for you, yes, why not just use it rather than packing someone, packing it yourself, right? The idea here of the whole DevOps scene is, you know, what you want to reuse something that is already available rather than being created. All right, okay, so um, any other question? Let me see. Oh, of course, um, do and say use Hira. Of course, we should, we would. I do use Hira, but then again, you know, part of the demo, I want to show you the code, make it more simple rather than using Hira for now. Of course, I'm a Hira fan myself. All right, so um, any questions left? Docker is a built once, many time concept, great. So Vikram says, Docker itself follows built once and use many times concepts. He does not find greater use, user impact of Puppet to manage Docker instance. Okay, so um, here's the thing. Yes, Docker, you build once, use many times concept, but my, the way where Puppet come into the picture is when you want to deploy your, you want to manage your Docker host first. Second is when you want to to run Docker in a more complicated manner. You want to, of course, your container is there already, but the thing is you want to make sure you expose the proper ports. You want to make sure all your dependent uh, containers are available. Let's say you create a link between one container A to container B. You want to make sure container B exists before container A, right? So Puppet helps you in this form in such a manner. It's something is something simple like this, but yet it could get more complicated as we, as we add more options. We can say. I want to mount this volume from this container and I want to, to have these permissions and so on. So Docker configuration or running to Docker run command gets a little bit more complicated as as your requirement grows. And of course, you, you will want something more consistent. And this is where Puppet comes in. Puppet provide you with the consistency of managing your Docker instances. Your Docker image, yes, you can build it as much, you can build it once and use it as many times as you want, but setting up that instance itself is where Puppet can actually come in and help to make sure it's consistent across your cluster setup. Okay, so what AWS resources are not available yet from the Puppet Forge module? Um, there, what are not available yet outside of EC2, VPC, auto scaling, elastic search, uh, elastic load balancing, sorry, 
um, RDS and Route 53. Outside of all these items, the rest are not available yet. You can put in a feature request, obviously, and they will be more than happy to build it. And um, clusterization, okay, um, in response to Vikram, clusterization, yes, you could use Puppet for clusterization as well. If I can manage all of them from Puppet, would you use a combined Puppet and manual deployment? Okay, um, maybe you can tell me what kind of what I'm trying to manage. All of Puppet resource, all of the AWS, or all of Docker. Usually, I would try all of AWS resources. All right, yes. Unfortunately, I will have to do manual deployment at one point, but all the core and most important ones, usually the instances, the database, those, the, the network, the, the storage, the uh, load balancing, the auto scaling is there for me, is ready, ready for me. So um, I do not see why I need to do manual deployment as of now, but other than that, if it is needed, then yes, I would do a manual deployment if I cannot help it. Are there any more further questions, gentlemen, ladies? All right. Um, if there are no further questions, I would like to end the webinar here, and um, I believe that there are more webinars coming up from us in Olin Data. And do listen to read our emails on you know announcements of the next webinars, and I hope to see you again. Thank you very much for your attention, and have a nice day.